Hey, what's up guys? Joel Adams with the Iridesium and I am back with the Blender 2.8 Pro Tips course. In the last video we went over object mode, how to move, rotate, and scale your objects. And in this video we are going to be jumping into edit mode. Learning about vertices, edges, and faces, and how to manipulate your geometry on a finer level. So with that out of the way, let's jump right in and get started. So let's just kick off this tutorial by deleting the camera and the lamp just like we did last time. Select your cube and we're going to go into edit mode. So you can go up here and you can switch to edit mode or you can just hit tab. Tab is the shortcut to switch back and forth between object mode and edit mode. If you hit tab you're going to go into edit mode and you're going to immediately notice a whole bunch of tools have been added on right here and some things have changed up here. It looks basically the same but there are some differences. The first thing we're going to look at is these three icons. So you can see if you hover over them this one says vertex select, this one says edge select, and this one says face select. Every object that you create in edit mode is going to be made up of edges, vertices, and faces. So if we look at this cube, you can see that there's these little orange dots. Each of these dots is a vertex. And uh, this is an edge between two vertices is an edge. If you click on edge select mode, then you can select the edges. And then between these four edges is a face, and that is this whole side of the cube, uh, which if you select face select mode, you can then select that face with one left click. Every mesh object you ever make in edit mode is going to be made up of vertices, edges, and faces. So with that out of the way, let's, let's mess around with this cube. I'm going to select this face, and I'm just going to hit G, to enter the move tool and then Z to uh, make sure it's only moving on the Z axis. And uh, let's just pull this down, something like that. Maybe I'll, I'll type in negative one to enter a value. And then I'll hit tab to go into object mode. Now you can see our cube has been sheared. And uh, if you tab back into edit mode, it's exactly the same. You can now hit G, Z, and then one, and that would move it back up into a perfect cube again. So what we're gonna go ahead and model is a like a broken a stack of bricks. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm gonna call this cube our first brick. So I'm going to hit A to select everything, and then S to scale it down a little bit, something like this. I'll go S, to scale it and then Y to scale it only along the Y axis and then I'll hit 2 and then I'll hit S and Z and just eyeball it scale it down to something like that I think that looks like a pretty good brick so if we tab back into object mode we've got our brick we could have done this all in object mode but uh, it's fine to do it in edit mode there are um, there is a good reason for scaling in edit mode. I'm not going to talk about that yet because it's a little confusing. So tab back into edit mode and I'll just set this on the grid floor. Uh, we sort of scaled it arbitrarily um, so we can't enter a value very easily. Anyways, that's fine. Now that it's sitting on the grid floor, I want to get directly above it. You can use your numpad keys to get various views. So one would be right in front of the brick like this, three would be looking at its side, and then seven is on top. Now that we're looking on top of this cube, let's go ahead and duplicate it. In edit mode, if you select something, like if I select this face and hit shift D, G, Y to move it over, it's going to duplicate just that face and you're missing the whole rest of the brick. So make sure that before you duplicate the cube, you select the entire brick by hitting A, and then go on top by hitting 7. It's going to automatically enter orthographic view for you. Then you can hit Shift D to duplicate your cube. You can see it's automatically moving it. Just hit Y to uh, make sure it's only moving on the Y axis, and then drag it over. Um, now you can do this again if you wanted to, or you could hit A again to select both bricks and duplicate them both at once, which might be a bit easier. 
hit A one more time, I'll hit Shift D, Y, and drag that over to something like that. And you can see we've got the start of our brick wall. If you hit A again, you can hit 1 to go to the front view, hit Shift D, and then Z this time to move it only along the vertical axis, which is Z. Drag it up, something like that. Maybe hit 3 to go to the side view, and then go G, Y to drag it over, and then just offset these a little. Something like that. Now you can hit A again. Shift D Z and drag that up. Lots and lots of shortcuts. There you go, you've got the beginning of a brick wall. So now that you've got this part of the brick wall, you can begin tearing it apart. This is this is the fun part. So to deselect everything, you're going to hit Alt A. That's gonna deselect everything. And then what if you wanted to just select one cube, one, one brick? If you hit A, it selects all of them, and you don't want that. So what you're going to do is you're going to hover over the brick you want to select and hit L. That will select just that brick in edit mode. Remember, if you're confused about the interface, if the tools don't look right, think, what mode am I in? You could be, you're thinking you're in edit mode and you're hitting L and it's not working, that's probably because you're in object mode. Just make sure you are always aware of what mode you are in. That caused a lot of trouble for me back when I first started. So I'm going to make sure I'm in edit mode, hit L to select this bottom cube, and then I can rotate it. I'll hit R, Z, and maybe G, and then Shift Z so it doesn't move down. Something like that. Maybe I'll hit L and L, and then L again. Be L on this one. I can just delete those. Select that one and this one and this one and those. X, delete those vertices. So now I'm going to select this one by hitting L. I'm going to go to the side view, 3, and then I'm going to hit R to rotate. We don't have to enter a um, axis to rotate on because we are looking at the cube from the side that we want to rotate it. So just hit R, something like that. And maybe this one should be deleted too. And I'll just actually place this one down here. And this one can be tilt it up a little bit. So what we're doing is we're just, uh, I'm just randomly placing these bricks so they're a little out of order. Something like that. Maybe this one, I'm just using shortcuts. L to select the brick. R, Z to rotate on the Z axis. G, X. I want to just move it on the X something like that. Now we're going to add some bricks laying around, so I'll hit L again on one of these bricks that's already at the bottom. Shift D to duplicate it. We're already moving it, so you can just hit Shift Z to constrain it only to the Z axis. Uh, move it over here. Maybe it's maybe this is that brick right there. Just doing this over and over again. Um, as you can see, I'm doing it quite fast. I'm sure you're probably looking at the keyboard and uh, trying to figure out if I'm cheating or speeding this up or something. So then I'll maybe put this one right here, hit G, Z to drag it up and just set it on top of those bricks like that because that's the cool thing to do. Hit L, duplicate this one, L to select it and then Shift D to duplicate it, sorry. Move that over there. There you go, so that's pretty cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate a whole section of this. If you go to your selection tool and click and hold down, you'll see all these different selection types. This type is select box, and you can, you know, click on it, and then you'll be able to drag and select. Or you can just hit B, which is the shortcut, and I, you know, I prefer shortcuts. So I'm going to select this whole section of the wall. After selecting this selection, you can see that the back of these bricks has not been selected. Um, it's only selected what we could see. So if you hit Control L, it's going to select 
all the geometry that's connected to whatever you selected. So if I select just that part of the brick and hit Control L, it's going to select the whole thing. If you're just selecting a brick, you might as well just hit L. That's way easier. You could do this over and over again if you wanted. Or you could go to the side view, hit B to box select, select whatever you wanted, and then hit Control L. That's what I like to do. Whatever. It's up to you. Now I'm going to go to the top view, and that is 7. Then I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate everything I have selected. I'm going to right click to cancel the moving action. Hit R to rotate it 90 degrees, something like that. So now that we've got it rotated 90 degrees, it's not in the right place. I'm going to hit G Shift Z to drag it over here. And you can see those blocks are kind of intersecting. Um, we're going to have to fix that. So just move it all the way in like this so that these blocks are the ones that are in between. And then we can go ahead and hit L and L to select both of those X vertices. Now you can see that this block is intersecting with that one right there. Um, so go ahead and select this block by hitting L, G, Shift, Z, and move it over something like that. There we go. So now we have our brick wall. That's pretty cool. You could hit Shift, D in object mode. We're duplicating the actual object, not the mesh, in edit mode. Hit Shift, Z, and uh, R, Z, 9, 0, something like this. G X. So that's edit mode and that's pretty powerful. I haven't gone over any of these tools yet so really quickly I'm just going to show you some of those. Um, I'm going to hit tab to go back into object mode. Shift A to add in a new piece of geometry. Go under mesh right there at the top and then select cube. I'm then going to hit G X to move that over here and then maybe G Z one to set it right on top of our plane. Then hit tab to go into edit mode uh, so that I can show you some of these tools. So if I select this face, we're going to look at this first tool. This is the extrude region tool. Click on it. It's going to give you this little plus. If you click on the plus and drag it out, you can extrude that face out. Now in so doing, you have created new geometry. First, you just had the cube. You had the six faces and then the eight vertices that made up the cube. But now we've selected a face and we have dragged it out. So now we've got the six faces that make up this cube plus the rest of the faces that we just added on, which must be, uh, looks like 14 faces. So if I were to select this and drag it out, you can just continue to extrude. However, there are other tools. For instance, this one says Inset Faces. Click on it. You can see there is no gizmo. There's nothing showing. If you click and drag, you will inset something. And you can see that your original face has been scaled down and these four other faces have been added in around it. So if I select the uh, Extrude tool again, I could then extrude this down, maybe grab this face. And you could get really crazy and start making some weird science fiction stuff. I guess I'll show you uh, two more. So we've got bevel. If you switch, you, you're on face select mode. Um, just be aware of that. If you switch to edge select mode, then you can grab one of these edges. I'm going to go ahead and grab this one. And then if you click and drag, you will be able to bevel your geometry. This is actually... This right here is a mistake I made, and it's a good thing I made it because it's quite important and I should point it out. So on this side, you can see it beveled clean. On this side, for some reason, it has this weird face. Now, the reason it has this face is because we selected this side of the cube and extruded it without knowing. We accidentally extruded it, which means there's an extra face just sitting there that we don't even know about. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull it out so that you can see it, just like that. If you hit X, you've got vertices, edges, faces, and a whole bunch of other options that we're not going to go over right now. Um, you should know that if you hit X faces, it's going to only delete the face that you've got selected. If you hit vertices, it's going to delete each one of these dots. 
So once this dot is gone, um, all of the faces that it supports will also disappear. So just select that face and then hit X vertices. Now you can go ahead, switch to edge select mode, select both of those and hit F. F is the way you fill something. That's gonna fill this hole. So then you can select your edge and bevel it out, just like that. Now that you've got that beveled out, you could select this one, bevel that out, bevel that out. Yeah, you could really go crazy with this. Let's go over one more tool. That's the loop cut tool. If I select it, you can see there's these yellow lines that um, wrap around our geometry when we hover over it. So I'm just gonna hover over it until I can see this and click. Now you can see, if I go back to my selection tool, that it's added this whole loop of new edges and vertices around my original geometry. So this is how you would get more geometry in an area, um, one way anyways. Uh, so now that we've got that, I could hit Control R, which is the shortcut for it. If you ever need to know the shortcut to something, just hover over it and it will give you that. So hover over loop cut and you can see the shortcut there at the very end is Control R. So if I hit Control R, again, it's going to give me uh, an option to add another loop cut. And I could just do this all day until I feel like I finally figured it out, figured out life. So um, something like that, now I could use face select and go through, select some of these faces, maybe something like that. Um, this, these ones, don't select these ones near the edge because if you do, when you pull them back, they'll create this overlapping face. Just select ones that are sort of on the inside, so something like that. So now you can extrude those in I'm just going to hover over the extrude tool and look at what the shortcut is. So you can see the shortcut is just E. So if I hit E, I can extrude those in and uh, I have now run into the faces that are coming down from here. So maybe I'll just move that back. And we've got this really ugly, useless, pointless object. So I'm going to delete that. Maybe select both of these, shift D, R, Z, 180 degrees, we'll flip it all the way around. If you hit seven, you'll go to top view, then you can hit G and move that something like this. Go back down here and we have the decaying ruins of an old building of some sort. I'm gonna hit shift A to add in a mesh and then I'm gonna select plane and then just scale this up, scale it up one more time something like that. You can see we've got a nice plane for these bricks to sit on and uh, it's looking pretty cool. Maybe this is what those buses ran into after they fell off the bridge. So anyways, that's basically it for this tutorial. I just wanted to quickly go over edit mode and show you what that is. It is one of the most powerful tools in Blender. The things you can create in edit mode are truly amazing and I really do recommend that you go in and mess around with it. In the future I'll do more tutorials on edit mode and if you're watching this uh, in the future you might as well go ahead and check out some of those videos as edit mode is really important to learn and important to get the hang of. Anyways that's all I've got for you guys today. As homework, I really recommend that you make a bridge like we did in the last tutorial, except this time do it in edit mode. Edit mode really has a lot of powerful tools and you should be able to make something that's a lot cooler. So go ahead and mess around with edit mode and I'll see you in the next tutorial where we will be doing some stuff with modifiers. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time. This is Iridesium.